All right, guys, you will not believe that it is a dark, gray, gloomy, drizzly day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gloomy. It is Saturday, October 30th, 2021, and I'm trying to uh, get the propane delivery man to show up at my house and I figure the best way to do that is start a video that will guarantee that in the next few minutes I will get my probably fracked propane. I, I'm thinking the fossil fuels coming in on this truck to keep uh, me warm probably fracked. But anyway, since it is Saturday, <clears throat> it is time for our weekly hopium Roundup rant, our apocaloptimism, hopium, whatever you want to call it, roundup rant. Uh, and I have to say, this is probably my easiest hopium roundup I have ever done because I be is it tomorrow or Monday that the infamous COP26, COP26 begins. Uh, and so, of course, the mainstream media and my email box and everything, uh, you know, just overflowing with uh, optimism going into COP26. And I'm going to start right here with my email address. I have uh, an email from none other than Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg has emailed me. So Greta, I thought she was not going to COP26, but I guess she changed her mind. So this is Greta's message to me and anybody else uh, as COP26 unfolds. Take it away. Greta Thunberg, <clears throat> this is not a drill. It is code red for the earth. Millions will die as our planet is devastated, a terrifying future that will be created or avoided by the decisions you make. You have the power to decide. I don't know. It's a little unclear whether she's actually talking to the UN or to all of us here. Yeah. As citizens across the planet, we urge you, I guess she's talking to the uh, UN, we urge you to face up to the climate emergency. Not next year, not next month now. Keep the precious goal of one and a half C alive. Yes, Greta, keep the precious goal of one and a half C alive with urgent action to, to have global emissions by 2030 and all fossil fuel investments, subsidies, and new projects immediately and stop new exploration and extraction. Yes. Deliver the $100 billion promised to the most vulnerable countries. And don't forget the most important one that Greta Thunberg is solidly on board with. Create green jobs. Yes, create green jobs. <coughs> Protect the most vulnerable and use climate action to reduce inequality. It only takes one, one inspiring leader to make the difference. Climate change is a golden opportunity to radically transform our societies for good. Yes, it's also an opportunity for determined visionary leadership. It will take immense courage, but know that when you rise, billions will be right behind you. Thank you, uh, Greta Thunberg. Yes. Uh, all right, but from Greta Thunberg 
to Al Gore, and, and, and guys, uh, I probably should have let off with this one. There's email directly from Al Gore to me from the Climate Reality Project. Guys, it has finally happened. We have Al Gore. Uh, I don't know what year this senile, deluded old fart thinks it is. He is actually still pulling out this cliche at this point. The window for action to avert dramatic global temperature increases is closing fast. Yes. COP26. Yes. COP26 represents a critical crossroads in our fight for climate action. Representatives from nations all around the world will convene to develop a new action plan to keep the goals of the Paris Agreement within reach. Some nations have already set their goals to reach their net zero emissions. Yes. Here is how you can join me for 24 hours of reality. <laughs> Let's get real. All right. <laughs> He's talking directly to me, obviously. Demand real change by posting on social media. There you go. By posting on social media with the hashtag, let's get real. Record and post a short video explaining why real climate action matters to you. Yes. It, any platform you prefer, including YouTube, with the hashtag, let's get real. We have the clean energy solutions. We need to halt warming in time to avoid the worst of the crisis. But now we must summon the political will to implement them at the speed and scale this crisis demands. It's never been more important for you to join the conversation about climate reality. Yes, we can build the pressure needed to convince our leaders to act now before it's too late. Around the world, people just like you, Sam, will raise their voices and demand real action on the climate crisis during 24 hours of reality. Yes. <laughs> so join me and millions of others and tell your leaders enough is enough. Let's get real. Yes. Thank you for everything you do, Sam. From Al Gore, founder and chairman of the Climate Reality Project. Okay, from Al Gore to Pope Francis. Pope Francis demands, demands, quote, radical climate action at COP26. Pope Francis says urge world leaders to stop the, quote, degradation of our common home at the COP26 climate summit. Yes, the head of the Roman Catholic Church has called on politicians to, quote, commit to an urgent change of direction with radical action to stop climate change, creating an unlivable world, insisting we cannot allow this to happen. Yes, leaders gathering uh, for the landmark UN climate conference must, quote, provide effective responses to the present ecological crisis and offer concrete hope to future generations, plural. Yes. Okay, we cannot forget uh, 
the most deluded old fart, uh, godfather of them all, Sir David Attenborough. I think uh, he is 95, I believe. Sir David Attenborough has issued a warning ahead of the UN Climate Summit that leaders must act now or, quote, it will be too late for the planet. Yes, COP26 has been billed as the last best chance to keep global temperature rises to more, no more than one and a half C. Yes. Uh, so then, you know, he goes on talking about how completely doomed we are. Uh, all right. After going through how completely doomed we are, <clears throat> Sir David, who will be present at the summit, said the possibilities of COP26 gave him, quote, some <sighs> hope. Yes, yeah, some hope. Okay. Quote. For the first time, for the I thought it was the 26th time. Uh, I guess this is he's got this confused with 1990 uh, or somewhere. Was it 1990? Was the first one of these? Uh, you know, when you're 95 years old, you kind of get 1990 and 2021 mixed up. So you have to forgive the senile old fart for that. All right. Quote for the first time. People around the world will hear the arguments as to what we should do, the analyses as to what the problems are, and what the solutions are. Those two things bring me some hope. All right. We go from that old, one old deluded fart to the other deluded old fart, E.O. Wilson, uh, Edward O. Wilson, I think. How old is this dude? 92 years old. 92 years old. You know, E.O. Wilson, he's this guy uh, leading the charge, I think, to protect 30% of the planet uh, by 2030 and half of the planet by 2050, you know, leading the, the charge to give humans half the planet and every other earthling we share the planet with the other half by the year 2050. If you can't remember who uh, biologist E.O. Wilson is, um, Quote, if we fail to do it, and a large portion of the biological diversity of the world is allowed to be exterminated, the generations, all the generations, plural, to come. Yes, all the generations to come. Yes, uh, that carelessness will be regarded as one of humanity's greatest failures. Yes, but we have, if we just take a little bit of care and measures what we will achieve by in saving the rest of Earth's biology and by setting aside more space than we have in the past, it will, it will be one of humanity's proudest achievements. Yes talking about the so-called 30 by 30 target. Uh, yes, one of humanity's proudest achievements, the 30 by 30 target. Uh, you know, ending in the Half Earth Project calls for protecting half the planet's land and sea. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Wilson, who continues to write, is still optimistic. Humankind will do the right thing. <clears throat> if we don't do the right thing, 
the slope of human of human history will always be downward. Saving the planet from falling into the kind of downward spiral Wilson warns about will be the aim of COP26 starting on Sunday, starting tomorrow, I guess they have their little opening festivities. Okay, from E.O. Wilson. I don't know how old novelist Kim Stanley Robinson is. Kim Stanley Robinson, I, I've never read any of his novels. What, what he's, he's one of these, what do they call it? Uh, there's a name for it, uh, climate disaster fiction, I guess. What he's, he has several novels and he's working on a new one about, you know, climate change destroying the planet and writes a lot about the Anthropocene. Here from the New Scientist, I can't remember the alert reader who sent this to me, Kim Stanley Robinson on how to have a good Anthropocene. Yes, the climate alarmist talking about how to have a good Anthropocene. Uh, <clears throat> So, you know, they, again, like all of them, starting off about how doomed we are. <clears throat> so, th this is the, the writer uh, interviewing the guy. So, where does hope lie? In top-down efforts such as international diplomacy and grassroots local efforts by citizens and everything in between, says Robinson, quote, it is an all-hands-on-deck situation. That idea of either or, or one's better, one's worse, all that needs to be thrown over the side, to close quote, he said. It is for this reason that Stanley Robinson thinks research into geoengineering methods such as temporarily temporarily reducing the amount of the sun's energy re reaching the earth is worth pursuing. All that matters to him is what works and is fast, he says. Yes, we're going to start uh, temporarily blocking the sunlight with chemtrails. Uh, all right, but what about COP26? Stanley Robinson says he sees opportunity at the COP26 climate summit where he will give a speech. Quote, my, my, my hopes are high that COP26 will come up with something striking progress will be made. Yes, Joe Biden has been surprisingly good on climate. And I say this as a leftist. <laughs> oh, God. Police. Uh, anyway, yes. Okay, progress will be made. All right, so... Uh, a couple of days ago, I was doing this rant about these, uh, these various climatologists uh, who do not have their heads up their asses and are actually saying there is no chance that COP26 is going to do a damn thing to save the planet. And uh, my battery shut down as I was building into, uh, obviously, they have to close with some hopium. And this is what the mainstream media, I guess, considers hopium. This is this fellow, I believe, from UCLA, Daniel Swain. <clears throat> For many climate scientists, the mood ahead of Glasgow can best be described as one of grim realism. Despite that, Despite the mood of grim realism, many of those who spoke to Yahoo News also expressed a measure of optimism that human beings can still significantly slow climate change. 
So they end with this quote from uh, climatologist Daniel Swain. Uh, where are we as a planet? Anyone thinking that we're on a runaway train? Daniel Swain, guys, quote, I liken it more to being on a train. There you go. I liken it more to, to being on a train, not a runaway train where the brakes don't work, but a train where the brakes are perfectly functional, but the conductor is just actively choosing not to apply them. So, if we choose to apply the brakes, the train will slow down and come to a halt. Yes, but so far, we're still just thinking about tapping the brakes lightly. That is not enough. All right, if we just choose to apply the brakes, the train will slow down and come to a halt. But, uh, okay. <clears throat> I'm just going to close with three more. We're going to move away from COP26. Just three kind of flotsam and jetsam pieces <clears throat> over there in the Philippines. In major ocean polluter Philippines, group turns plastic waste into planks. A group of recyclers in the Philippines is trying to ease the country's worsening plastic waste crisis by turning bottles, single-use plastic, and snack food wrappers that clog rivers and spoil beaches into building materials. Yes, the plastic flamingos, as they are common, commonly known, collect the waste, shred it, and then mold it into post and planks called eco-lumber. Eco-lumber, that can be used for fencing, decking, or even to make, appropriately enough, disaster relief shelters. Okay, so how many... It doesn't say how long they've been in business. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Have, having collected over 100 tons of plastic waste to date, 100 tons of plastic waste to date, the social enterprise is doing its bit to address a local problem that has global ramifications. Yes, approximately 80% of global ocean plastic comes from Asian rivers, and the Philippines alone contributes a third of that total. Uh, okay, so they have collected 100 tons. <clears throat> at, the, at this point, some 300 million tons of plastic waste are produced annually. 300 million tons. And now, in some forecast, is that could quadruple by the year 2050. But going on 300 million tons, we go over to our handy-dandy percentage calculator, which I'm usually using for corona panic statistics. 100, 100 times is what percent of 300 million times if your answer was 0 0.0000033 percent, give yourself a gold star. And I'm all for this eco lumber stuff. It's good stuff. It's expensive as hell. That's why I don't use it. Uh, why anybody doesn't use it. Okay. Uh, two more. As long as we're over there in Asia. Let's go from the Philippines to India. Women show the way as India pushes eco-miracle 
seaweed. Yes. <clears throat> India is the world's third largest carbon polluter behind China and the U.S. and has yet to set a target date for its emissions to reach net zero. But authorities in India are looking into how seaweed farming could help reduce the impact of their greenhouse gas emissions, reverse ocean acidification, and improve the marine environment, as well as providing a sustainable livelihood for marginalized coastal communities. Good for them, but we're going to end up uh, with a little change of shifting of gears, looking at inflation forecast for the next year. You know, uh, you can find about 500 articles, uh, all of these doom and gloomers talking about how inflation is going through the roof in the year 2022. That uh, this is going to be the, you know, we're, we're, we're just talking about your wallet, okay, not the planet. But Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs is going to be the contrarian. Inflation will plunge in 2022, says Goldman Sachs. Hat tip to Goldman Sachs for taking a somewhat contrarian take on the longer term outlook for inflation. Of course, whether it proves correct is anyone's guess as headlines continue on price spikes for commodities and consumer goods. And then they go into all of this unintelligible uh, gobbledygook from Goldman Sachs claiming that uh, inflation is going to plunge next year. But I guess my little trick did not work and I did not call in my propane delivery guy. I'm, I'm hearing that uh, gas is going to go up 30% this winter. You can expect your winter heating bills to uh, go up 30%. I think I remember I paid, I'm pretty sure I paid $2.85 a gallon when I filled up this tank before I left last year. So uh, I don't know how much money I'm getting ready to spend. If this dude ever shows up, uh, I'm beginning to think he has forgotten about uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm, but I need to get out and plant some daffodils before Old Man Winter arrives on Tuesday. Looks like we're finally gonna get our first freeze here this week in November for New York. Our first, last year it was September 18th was our first freeze. This year it will be November 3rd or November 4th. And then it's off to the Oasis of Freedom of Florida one week from Monday. Get out there and plant your daffodil bulbs while you still can. Bye, guys. All right, little dog, you survived that, and the propane man did not come.